Welcome to yet another BiStats video. This time we'll be talking about how to evaluate a diagnostic test. Specifically, we're going to cover sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. And if you're here for likelihood ratio, then I have a little treat for you in the description. It's a link to a video also made by me and a bunch of other colleagues. It's a very high quality video and we go in detail uh, and in length discussing likelihood ratio, pretty much giving you every um, important detail about it. Uh, but for step one, generally they do not ask you how to calculate likelihood ratio. They don't really ask you um, how to use it. They, they put more emphasis into understanding what the number means instead of just trying to calculate it with hard numbers. So it, just go to that video if you're, if you're interested in likelihood ratio and you can get a full explanation about everything. You can just skip the parts that involve the calculation. All right, so let's start with uh, this first couple, sensitivity and specificity. They're a very infamous couple. There are a lot of problems uh, when it comes to trying to understand them. And the reason is because people generally uh, just memorize these two things, th that sensitivity uh, is the proportion of all people with disease who test positive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they, they just you know memorize that it rules out, they memorize the formula, and there you go. For specificity, it's the same exact thing. They just memorize these three things, and there you go. They think that they're, they're ready. Uh, but the problem is, the way you truly understand sensitivity is by linking all these three together. When you link them all three together, you pretty much have a gold star, you're ready to go, you're absolutely ready to handle any question of sensitivity. Similarly with specificity, if we link them all together with one proper understanding, you again have this beautiful gold star, you're ready to tackle any question and you're pretty much good to go. The premise behind them is basically this two by two table. It is a standard way of, of uh, putting your thoughts onto a paper in order to understand not only the calculations but also where everything is and how to make the formulas. So let's first, before talking about either sensitivity or specificity, let's talk about this two by two table. So how do we make this two by two table? You put test here and disease up here. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Try to keep the positives and the negatives where they should be. Don't mix them up, otherwise you're going to be mixed up during the exam. Now some people, they have the disease and they'll get tested positive. That's a true positive. Some people do not have the disease, they'll get tested negative. That's a true negative. Sometimes, however, we make mistakes. Sometimes someone does not have the disease, they get tested positive. And that's a wrong positive. Wrong positive, wrong positive, false positive. Sometimes they do have the disease, but they get tested negative. Now that's a wrong, negative, wrong, negative, false, negative. This is the premise we're working with. This is the two by two table that we're working with. Now, if we, if we think about the definition and try to relate it to the formula, it becomes very, very simple. The definition of sensitivity is the proportion of all people with the disease, all of the people with the disease who test positive, who test positive, these guys. So notice the formula is perfectly like that. It is the proportion of those who pretty much test positive over all of those who have the disease. The proportion who test positive over all of those who have the disease. When you think about specificity, proportion of all people without the disease, that's all of these guys, who test negative, and that's these guys. So the formula is again, those who tested negative, a proportion of those who test negative over all of the ones without the disease. And that's how we begin with this first link. That's how we link this formula right to the definition. Now, sometimes you don't really want to go through all these mental hurdles to make sure that, you know, oh, uh, did I mix up the formulas or anything? So I have a quick little mnemonic for you. Sensitivity. You hear that N? Immediately, put the fraction, false negative goes right here in the denominator, true positive, true positive. Notice, the one we put here is always going to be false, and how do we know if it's negative or positive? You just follow the word, sensitivity, false negative. Then you just flip the other two, true positive, true positive, all right? For specificity, you hear that P? Yep, you already guessed it. You put the fraction, false positive, plus, and then flip the other two, true negative, true negative. And that's just a really quick way of how to remember the formulas on the fly. But hopefully by now, you should be able to uh, relate this formula to the definition. Now this is extremely important. This is 
part of our gold star, part of our, our understanding lies within linking these two concepts together. Now let's talk about how sensitivity rules out and how specificity rules in. Now I always get this question from my colleagues. If sensitivity has everyone with the disease, how is it ruling out the disease? And if specificity is everyone with the disease, then how is it ruling in disease? To explain this, we need to set up another premise. The premise goes as such. Let's have person X right here. And let's have person Y right here. And let's say um, you're just their third friend and you're, you sometimes watch movies with, with person X, you sometimes watch movies with person Y, uh, and you sometimes, let's say you uh, go up and go get a snack and you come back, sometimes you find them crying because there's an event happening in the movie. Uh, let's say sometimes you watch Titanic, sometimes you watch um, another sad movie, for example, let's say uh, Romeo and Juliet. I'll just call it Romeo. And uh, let's, let's just pick another third film that's pretty sad. Let's pick uh, The Fault in Our Stars. I'll just call that Stars. All right. So sometimes, let, let's say um, person X is sensitive and person Y is uh, specific. Now, go, go back to your layman term for, for sensitive and specific. Sensitive is someone with uh, heightened senses, someone that doesn't let anything go by, yada, yada, yada. In this case, person X is so sensitive that if, if he watches any of these three movies, he will always cry. Person Y is so specific, he'll only cry when he watches Romeo and Juliet. Now you can already see where I'm going with this. Sensitivity rules out because if you come back and you see that he does not cry, you can rule out all of these three movies. You weren't watching any of these three movies because he's very sensitive he'll cry on any of them. However, if he does cry, it could be Titanic, could be Romeo, and could be Fault in Our Stars. Now you can already see where I'm, where I'm going with this. If, if you're interested in a particular disease, in this case Romeo and Juliet, and you find that the patient is crying, in other words, the test is positive, you're not sure. It could be the Titanic, it could be maybe an endocrinological disorder, it could be a cardiovascular disorder, you're not sure. But, but if you wasn't crying, if the test was negative, you are sure it's none of these problems. You are sure that you can rule out these movies, you can rule out these diseases because it was negative. Again, that's where the rules out comes from. You can already see what I, where I'm going with uh, specificity. So specificity, let's say you come back and he's, and he's crying, you are sure that he's watching Romeo and Juliet. So you see the beauty in this? If you have a very specific test, you are sure that the, that the patient's problem, if it, if it was positive, you are that much sure, however specific it is, if it's 100% specific, for example, you're 100% sure that the patient has this problem, that our friend was watching Romeo and Juliet. However, if he wasn't crying, it could still be Titanic, it could still be the fault in our stars. This is why when they say we want to screen people, when they say we want to screen, we want to pretty much see if they're watching any of these three. So you can already tell, oh, probably having a good sensitive test is more important than a good specific test when it comes to screening. So here we knocked three birds with one stone. You understand why um, you have to screen with a sensitive test. And now you understand why sensitivity rules out. And now, lastly, you understand why specificity rules in. So again, you pretty much linked the formula to the definition. Now you linked ruling out. And now you officially got your gold star. And this is what I was saying at the, at the end of that premise. Uh, high sensitivity is used for screening. And, and now that makes sense for you. So sensitivity overall, you should be pretty much golden with it. Uh, specificity, again, you linked this to this. So you got your gold star pretty much. And the whole premise of, of this 2 by 2 table is very important. You should be able to, to make it on the fly. Uh, so yeah, this is sensitivity and specificity. Now positive and negative predictive value could not be any simpler. Positive predictive value is the probability that a person has a positive test and actually has the disease. These guys, over all of those who tested positive, these guys, and that's where they came with the formula and you can pretty much throw it the exact opposite way, all of those who tested negative and we're only interested in those who actually do not have the disease and that's where they came up with the formula. The majority of the problems really are with sensitivity and specificity. You shouldn't have any problems with positive and negative predictive value because the formulas are pretty much all the positives. 
or all the negatives, depending on whether you're doing positive predictive value or negative predictive value. There is just one important uh, principle, which is that they have a special relationship with prevalence. Now, again, I know you you keep hearing prevalence pop up everywhere because it's very important, but just to uh, quickly summarize it, uh, prevalence is pretty much, if I put P here, uh, prevalence is pretty much just how uh, many people or, or the proportion of people who actually have a disease within a given population. So let's say a population uh, has, for example, 100 people and there are 20 cases of, for example, diabetes, then we would say the prevalence of diabetes is 20 over 100, which equals 20%. Uh, so this is how you come up with prevalence. Now, I'm not really going to go through hard numbers to show you this relationship between positive and negative predictive value as well as prevalence, but I will explain it to you logically and how this should logically make sense to you. First off, let's just talk about the relationship. Prevalence, if it increases, then positive predictive value will increase and negative predictive value will decrease. If prevalence decreases, then positive predictive value will decrease and negative predictive value will increase. Notice that negative predictive value is always inverse to the prevalence and positive predictive value is always in a direct relationship with the prevalence. Now I need you to think for a second. Let's say, for example, we have a population. Let's say population X. Population, I'll call it P-O-P. And let's say population Y is over here. And let's say they both have cases of diabetes, but the prevalence of diabetes here is 50%. And the prevalence here is 5%. Now you can already probably see where I'm going with this. If you were to come visit this population, you are pretty much half the time, every time that you meet someone, half the time you're going to meet someone with diabetes. Here, only 5% of the time you're going to meet someone with diabetes. So let's say instead of coming to visit this population, you're sitting in your clinic and they're coming to you. Positive predictive value will of course increase if you're in this population. Because if you have more people with the disease, you're going to have more positive. If you have less people with the disease, you're going to have more negatives. So you can already see why prevalence plays a role with, with the positive predictive value and negative predictive value. You might be asking me, what about sensitivity and specificity? These are qualities of a test. Therefore, prevalence does not affect them. A test, for example, if it's 90% sensitivity, it's not going to care if the prevalence is 50% or 5%. The test is still 90% sensitive. Same thing goes for specificity. It is not affected by prevalence. The only thing affected by prevalence is the positive and negative predictive values. So you can actually um, apply this yourself. You can see this, this in action. Uh, try to make two two by two tables, uh, one on the left, one on the right. Make the prevalence different. Make one, for example, 30%, the other one 10%, and then uh, keep, keep the population numbers the same. So for example, 1,000 people in this group, 1,000 people in that group and then put sensitivity and specificity equal to each other, regardless of which 2 by table you're working on. And then you're going to see that when you calculate positive and negative predictive values, their values will actually follow this relationship. So I'm not going to go through it here because it's going to take too much time, but you're just going to have to trust me. And I, I urge you to do it yourself because it's going to be excellent practi practice for uh, you doing this 2 by 2 table by yourself. Again, this 2x2 this two two table is your meat. It's, it's basically the, probably the most important thing on this page when we talk about sensitivity, specificity, and positive and negative predictive value. To wrap up this video, let's talk about this really important figure. Now, you have the summary right here, but I don't really want you to cheat on this video. You can pretty much cheat if you're following with me on the book, but uh, for the purpose of this uh, video, I really want to, to help you focus on how you can come up with these numbers on your own. So let's sort of draw a very crude crude uh, it sort of looked like this I'm not the best artist but uh, yeah so this this let's say this is the cutoff and this is the cutoff so this is a and this is B and this is C so it's a pretty good diagram it's not the best diagram out there but uh, let's focus on a B and C so B is the usual cutoff for a specific test they will they will not tell you that this is true negative and this is true positive they, they will they will never label you this they, they, you should be thankful if they actually even give you this diagram in a question, okay? Usually what they just tell you is that they tell you the cutoff has went, went from 5 to, uh, for example, 
5. Let me fix that arrow. And from 5 to 6.5. And then they ask you what which of the following is true. And they tell you sensitivity, increase. Specificity, decrease. Um, negative predictive value, increase. So on and so forth. And they give you all these choices and one of them is going to be correct. So uh, you should be able to figure out which one is correct. So the way I like to do it is first off, you should pretty much easily know whether whether the cutoff is going from B to C or B to A. Now let's just take this one step at a time. Let's say it's going from B to C. Okay, let's start with this. This is our, our, our first example. What I want you to focus on is what is happening to false positive and what is happening to false negative. Don't feel shy to actually draw this out in the exam. It'll be a lot better than just uh, thinking it in your head and making a mistake. So again, B to C, that means our, our false positives will be really small. They'll be really, really, really small. So if they're going to be really small, then if we go back to our formula, which you know you should think about in your head, but I was going to draw it here for you, uh, specificity, false positive, plus true negative, true negative. If this number goes down, this number, since it's you know in the denominator, this number goes up. Therefore, if there is any option saying specificity goes up, that is the correct answer. Now, just because you know specificity goes up, you can immediately know what happens to the rest of, of, the, of the answer choices. So if specificity goes up, you don't even have to calculate sensitivity. You know that sensitivity goes down without even doing the formula. If specificity goes up, sensitivity goes down. Moreover, if specificity goes up, positive predictive value also goes up because remember the formula also has this here and negative predictive value will go down so notice specificity and positive predictive value are similar sensitivity and negative predictive value are similar they go in the same direction so again just figure out one and flip the rest because they're always going to be opposite to each other depending on uh, what's in the formula so always remember this sort of theme. Figure out, is this decreasing or is this decreasing? Once you figure it out, you can pretty much map them all out. This will this should not take more than a minute. You draw this entire figure. This should take 10 seconds. You figure out whether false positive or false negative is decreasing. That should take another 10 seconds. And then you map all of these out. This maybe should take 20 seconds. Take in some also time to, to read the questions or hopefully understand the context. It should not take more than a minute to answer this question. And hopefully, with that said, you should be able to answer any question that comes about sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. And don't forget, if you'd like to see likelihood ratio, you can always go in the link in the description and uh, have, a, have a very detailed video about likelihood ratio. If you benefited from this video, please let me know in the comments. Consider liking and subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.